And we're going to hand over to another fantastic LGB Alliance, Kate Barker, who's also doing just unbelievable things. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm probably a bit, a bit late to the party to um, activism, certainly much more so than the panel and probably most of you here as well. I promise that I'm doing my absolute best to make up for it, for it now. And my backstory is that about five years ago, I was, uh, I was writing a monthly column for Diva magazine. And <laughs> yeah, I, well, I know that now. <laughs> and it was called it was called the Lesbian Boss, and it was kind of just a fun, fluff, humorous piece. But it was about if you're a lesbian in the workplace, you know, how do you make sure you don't get passed over for promotion? How do you make sure that you get the pay rise that you want? How can you be out at work and not be disadvantaged by that? And and the editor never changed a word. Not one word ever did she change. Except every time I put the word lesbians, she said, Oh, can you just add in and our trans sisters? Oh, oh. Now, look, my, here's my confession I just bummed it in. I didn't even, I, I, didn't, I didn't think about it. And, and looking back, I don't think I was trying to be kind or inclusive. I really just felt it was of no consequence at the time until. I was writing a column and it was about pay disparity. So, you know, the difference between what men get paid as opposed to what women get paid, lesbians compared to gay men. So, so I wrote my column and she said, can you put in and our trans sisters? I said, well, I can't, I can't really put it in because you can see from the data that the main thing that's driving the difference, or in a sense, the main thing that's driving the dis difference is, is male or female. And she said, but a trans woman is a woman and a lesbian. Oh. And I, <laughs> hang on a minute. And that was, and that was kind of the, 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 very soon after I stopped writing that column and that, you know, and that was the point I moved on from there. But it, it really did make me think about the sort of coercive appropriation of language that means that you don't even you're not even allowed the words to describe yourself and your life and and your experience now that editor then went on and she's moved to uh, to mermaids she works at mermaids now and she is furiously theming and theying all over the place and you know and you know she's clearly you know, a, a butch lesbian, she was an articulate, you know, confident, so it seemed, woman. And again, that made me think, you know, what is it that's, that's making these strong, confident, bright lesbians not only flee from the idea of womanhood, but flee from the idea of being a lesbian? And, and those are themes which very much play into our work at LGB Alliance. We are lesbian-led because we recognise the dual discrimination faced by lesbians as, as women. And we're really, really horrified about the situation at the moment for, for young women particularly and for, for young girls, uh, you know, many of whom think, as we've all heard, lesbian is a porn category. Um, you know, they're horrified to, by the idea of being called lesbians. Um, and, and they're fleeing from it, they're, you know, they're running away from it. And I'd like to just, um, I think worst of that actually, is not just that they're fleeing, fleeing from the word, it's that they're being told that lesbians can be male and they're finding themselves um, in romantic and sexual relationships that they don't want to be in that are really, really bad for them. And it's, um, it's just, I would hate to be young now uh, um, and face what they're going through. So um, I'd just like to share with you just a few emails that we've had. My daughter, 14, is in desperate need of counselling. She's lesbian, her words and declaration, not mine. She suffers the most awful homophobic bullying at school, is regularly called faggot and has children who make noises like ooh every time she walks past them. Occasionally it's mildly physical and the school bus is like the Wild West. That's an email we received. Another is, thanks for the work you do. 
My daughter is, I believe, thinking about transitioning. I think she currently believes she's gender neutral. I find the whole concept of declaring yourself gender neutral because you have short hair and like to wear trousers incredibly sexist. I've tried to explain this, but I'm aware she may think I'm being old-fashioned and perhaps just transphobic. She needs role models of teens like herself who are either lesbian or bi who are proud of being an androgynous butch young woman. Thank you so much if you can help. And then a final one. And these are completely unedited and, and as I say, I receive emails like this every week. Um, hi, I wonder if you can help. My teen, undiagnosed ASD, has also been confused about her identity. I'm okay with this and want to encourage her to talk to people who don't have an agenda. Recently, though, a social worker has suggested mermaids, and I'm totally against them, or Stonewall having anything to do with her. Are there any groups or forums that don't push any agenda so she can just explore all options without prejudice? Thank you for any help you can give. So those, those are the kind of approaches that, that we get all the time. And um, we are tackling the issues. We, I suppose, what, you know, what's to be done? We're looking at the future. We, we look at three different things. So we look at um, events, because I think it's really important to bring people together, especially younger people who, um, post-lockdown, may never have been in a room with lots of other women or lots of other lesbians. And, it, you know, as you can tell from today, it's so, it's so positive. Then we focus on campaigns, and our campaigns are about um, highlighting the harms being done to lesbians um, that when we talk to politicians, and we're trying to also engage wider society so that um, people become sympathetic to to our needs and, and understand what it is um, that we're going through. Um, and then the third thing is providing services. So we're looking at providing services to support women who are already suffering um, because of the, the hostile environment that currently surrounds them. So I've just got a couple of examples of things we've done recently. Um, and that we're continuing to do. So um, I don't know if anybody came to our lesbian, I can say, yeah, <laughs> lesbian not criminal um, tour. So this plays back into the themes of being able, being allowed to, to claim the words that are already ours, such as lesbian. So for people that don't know, Tonya Yevion was faced with prosecution in Norway for calling out a trans-identified male by, by correctly sexing him. And she was uh, threatened of being charged uh, with a hate crime, uh, possibly even, even to be imprisoned. And we thought that that was um, an indication of what would be happening here if the Gender Recognition Reform Bill were to, were to go through, if it were to be enacted. And that seems like it's sort of rearing up again, um, that it might become a possibility. And we wanted to really show that self-ID has such a huge impact um, on all women, but in lesbian, on lesbians in, in particular. And the event comprised Tonya talking, a panel, then Tonya performing her Like a the Space Lesbian Dog uh, Eurovision Song Contest song. She was on the Eurovision Song Contest, which is so cool. Um, Paula Barton playing the violin and making everybody sing three-part harmonies <laughs> at a Welsh choir. The whole thing was intensely peculiar, um, but, but it just really worked. And, and, and it was a case of people getting together, really having a good time um, and going away talking about it. And I'm a firm believer that if we want more people to become activists, you've got to do things that are fun because it's just easy to persuade somebody to do something if it looks like they're going to have a good time when they get there. So we're at LGB Alliance, we're, we're always thinking about, you know, what's the social aspect? Partly because that's what people want and, and, and they ask for, but I think it helps to encourage greater engagement and, and greater activism. So that's, that's something that we look at. Um, and then we're looking at campaigns. So our main focus in the coming months is going to be looking at the conversion therapy bill, which is going to um, make its way into, into Parliament again. And the approach that we're taking and our, our positioning, I suppose you'd call it a slogan, although that's a bit glib, really. But our position is that conversion practices, which we're calling them not, not conversion therapy, it's the practice of conversion, our, our slogan is it's time to talk. Um, because in part, it's a reference to the fact that the reason we're all in this god-awful state is because uh, no debate became the... Uh, became the mantra and, and shut that down. And we want to demonstrate that LGB Alliance hopefully is sort of leading a charge in order to really generate some conversations that are meaningful about this. 
um, we're in favour of proper pre-legislative scrutiny and we want that to take as long as it needs to and again our feeling is that if you give the other lot a chance to talk for long enough it's always good for us so if we can you know I, and also t t time to talk is also extremely sensible and I think that's to our advantage as well, to show that we are, all of us, not, not just the LGB Alliance, but most activists and women's rights activists are sensible, they're, they're mainstream, they're right. And it's, and it's the other side that are absolutely bonkers. And we need to sometimes make a bit of space to let them, to let them show the world that. Um, and what our ask for the conversion practices um, bill is that we'd like more research and more re resources focused on detransitioners uh, we don't know anything about them. It's inevitable that it's going to be hugely um, growing cohort. We predict it's going to be mainly girls because of the huge uptake in girls going to gender clinics and social transitioning. Yeah, so as well as being a looming medical scandal, it's going to be a real huge um, uh, social scandal as well. That, and we really have to prepare and how, how are we going to uh, mitigate the impacts of that. And we're also looking for a decoupling of the of LGB and QT yes. across everything. Yeah. Um, that, that's kind of something that's underpinning all of the all of the work that we do. Um, but, and we're looking to take some concrete actions to actually make that happen. So for example, we will be um, doing a survey of all of our 7,000 newsletter subscribers asking them what they think of the word queer. Not to sort of prejudge what the outcome's going to be, but I think they're not going to like it. And so and we'll be able to use the results of that to be able to put together a report which we can share more widely to just really demonstrate what, what the differences are. We're very lucky that we have this, um, a, a, an almost a unique thing, which is a database full of proper lesbians and gays, like lady gays, that's right, lady lesbians and men gays, um, and, and like everybody else, all the other big organisations, all of their data is entirely compromised because it's um, predicated on, on gender. So we've actually got this great resource, which is 7,000 people that know very well what they are, um, and we need to ask them lots of questions and to use that information to be able to inform government policy and, and wider social policy. Um, and we also would like an acknowledgement that there are significant weaknesses in the, in the current data. So that's going to be our, our big campaign. And so the third thing we have a look at is providing services. Now, um, we had, um, we pitched to the National Lottery for uh, £9,000 to help us scope and plan a helpline for young people aged 13 to 25. And I have to say, um, the National Lottery have been really, really robust in their defence of us and in their defence of the idea that if you put forward a bid um, that's strong, if it's, you know, if, if it's um, legitimate, that they aren't going to make a decision based on whether or not they like us or um, whether some people on Twitter think we're awful, which has obviously happened to us in the past. And um, Denise from the Arts Council is going to talk in a second about that. But we, with this service, we've reached a point where, and this is extraordinary and really astonishing thing actually, just looking at it on the screen here, we are the only helpline in the UK that recognises that lesbians are female. <laughs> Isn't that just absolutely, it's, it's just absolutely crazy. Um, but that's where we are and it really sort of loops back to the idea of language and um, being able to reclaim the words that describe who we are and what our lives are um, and, and we think it's imperative to do that and just just to wrap up really um in our i don't know if people have followed our our tribunal yeah. should have the results we're hoping in, in two or three weeks but i think one of, the, one of the most striking things that happened there was kate harris our co-founder said um you know the word lesbian is taken Yes. And I just think for LGB Alliance, that, that continues to be um, the hill we're all ready to die on, frankly. Yes.